Hi, my name is Zach Riley, and we're here at Redwell Farm, the Angus Soil and Nutrient Network Farm. Today, we're going to cover an often overlooked element of the soil, the carbon to nitrogen ratio. The carbon to nitrogen ratio is important for the availability of nitrogen and other nutrients, and also the rate of decomposition of crop residue within the soil. When we consider soil health, it can be useful to understand this ratio and therefore to plan accordingly. The carbon to nitrogen ratio itself is fairly easy to understand. It's simply the number of parts of carbon to the number of nitrogen. And a healthy soil should be a ratio of 24 to one. That's 24 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Soil microbes, that includes the bacteria and fungi within a soil, typically have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of eight to one. Microbes need to maintain this ratio in order to live. However, they also need an energy source and this comes from the carbon within the soil. So a ratio of 24 to one, which is considered a healthy soil, provides enough carbon and enough nitrogen for soil microbes, as well as providing them with an energy source in order for them to thrive. So what happens when we add a residue to the soil with a high carbon to nitrogen ratio, such as wheat straw? Well, wheat straw has a ratio of approximately 80 to one, and therefore far too much carbon for the soil microbes. A high carbon content results in the microbes looking for nitrogen from elsewhere. In this case, it would be from the soil. This results in a process known as immobilization, where nitrogen no longer becomes available for plants, instead it's locked up within the microbes themselves. This nitrogen is then not available to any crop that's grown and is only released once plants start to decompose. This process is known as mineralization. What happens if we were to do the opposite and apply a residue with a very low carbon to nitrogen ratio. For example, a hairy vetch cover crop would typically have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of 11 to one. This would result in the microbes consuming the carbon within that residue and then looking for carbon to rebalance the soil from elsewhere. This could be positive as it could make a lot of nitrogen available to plants. However, it could also result in the mining of soil carbon as microbes are actively seeking another energy source. There is no universally correct carbon to nitrogen ratio for residues. However, if you wish to maintain a healthy soil, having a residue with a carbon to nitrogen ratio very close to 24 to one can be useful. An example of this would be compost, which typically has a ratio of approximately 30 to one. Additionally, if the residues have a low carbon to nitrogen ratio, they will be consumed very quickly by the soil microbes and therefore they won't offer much soil protection. Having some residue left on the surface can be very useful for reducing erosion, holding on to nitrogen as previously mentioned, and also providing a habitat for anthropods. So in this instance, a residue with a high carbon to nitrogen ratio would be useful. Let's take a look at how Redwell Farm is influencing their carbon to nitrogen ratio within their soil. So this field that we're in just now has had carrots growing in it. These carrots were bedded down with wheat straw and following harvest, this huge amount of straw was spaded in and can still be seen within the soil profile and on the soil surface. Roy, the farmer here at Redwell, has noticed in previous years that any crop following the carrots seems to be nitrogen deficient and he's always had to apply slightly more fertilizer in order to compensate for this huge amount of straw. So what we've decided to do is following the harvest of the carrots, we've sown red clover. Red clover is known for fixing huge quantities of nitrogen and being very quick to establish. The clover in this field was sown just four weeks ago and in another four weeks or so, it should be ready for grazing, adding more organic matter to the soil and extra nitrogen to help break down this straw. Clover can fix up to 250 kilos per hectare of nitrogen a year. Although this crop won't be in the ground that long, as it's just a catch crop, it should help to break down and rebalance the carbon to nitrogen ratio in the soil. Clover fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere by forming a symbiotic relationship with bacteria within the soil. When you look at the root of a clover plant, or indeed any legume, the nodules should appear a deep pink color. The pink pigment within the root nodules is only formed when the bacteria and the plant are working together and it can be a sign that the plants are starting to fix nitrogen, which is good. 
Using a nitrogen fixing plant can help to reduce fertilizer requirements on subsequent crops and can also provide uh, additional grazing. We hope that using red clover after the harvest of carrots will help to break down the straw and also provide a living cover on the soil. Additionally, it should help to reduce the fertilizer bill for next season. Establishing a cover crop is just one way the carbon to nitrogen ratio can be influenced. The application of manures or compost or growing a legume within the rotation can all influence this ratio. It's worth bearing it in mind as it can help to reduce your fertilizer use and also improve your soil protection, ultimately leading to increased soil health. Any of these techniques can be useful. However, choosing which one to use will depend on your own situation and your farm. It's always worth working out the cost benefit analysis of doing so before you embark on any new adventures. For more information on soil health, please visit the Farm Advisory Service website at faz.scot.